thought I was out. They pull me back in. <laughs> I'm sorry. If someone ever mentions The Sopranos in public to me, if someone ever is like, someone's like, what do you mean The Sopranos? I'd be like, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Actually, I'm going to like literally go off topic. Uh, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to find it. Let's see. Uh, Silvio. They pull me back in. Yeah. Right here. Uh, which is, uh, which is only uttered by Sil in the first two seasons. And then ultimately, um, it's like, you know, they abandoned that. But still, it's the most iconic moment uh, from like when the series was beginning. I get a notification just when I thought this is literally what it means. Dom's Great Flight. Oh, God. I already clicked on that link before. Uh, here, just show you what I'm talking about. So, cheer me up, babe. They, just when I thought I, thought I, was, I was out. out. Hey, boom, back, back in. <laughs> huh? Tepachino. Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, 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 yeah, Pussy Bop and Sarah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> way before, and there's going to be spoilers for The Sopranos here through on out, so if you have not seen The Sopranos, stop watching this video, and go and watch the entire series, then you can watch this video. If not, you don't really want to watch it, what is wrong with you? But yeah, um, yeah, way before, uh, he got whacked. Technically, that line was from uh, Godfather yeah, Part Three. Again. Uh, just positive memories of The Sopranos. Mostly positive memories. But yeah, I know that quote is technically from Godfather Part Three, but whenever I think of The Sopranos, I'm always going to quote Sill. I always use that. <laughs> Another interesting thing about The Sopranos is once you watch for like the past five months, you get to learn certain traits like, uh, you know, although I'm still trying to figure out what the hell Gumar means. All I just know to say is, oh, my God. I'm like, sometimes when I'm just thinking of it, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> But yeah, nevertheless, Sopranos, one of my all-time favorite shows. One of, like, really the first great, great, great television series. It was the television series that changed television forever. And there probably might have been shows like The Sopranos before, but nothing as ambitious as The Sopranos, really. And once The Sopranos hit, it was kind of like television changed forever, you know, because then we would get Mad Men and Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones and Boardwalk Empire. And, um, yeah, um, Sopranos overall is an amazing series. And, of course, you know, James Gandolfini, man, gone too soon. It's been, like, I think it's been eight years since he's passed away. James, oh damn it, James Gandolfini, yeah, James Gandolfini, uh, died 2013, yeah, so almost eight years since James Gandolfini passed away, and, you know, heart attack, that's just the worst, but, you know, definitely when you think of The Sopranos, you think of James Gandolfini, and it's his best role, honestly. You know, I could not imagine anyone in the role of Tony Soprano aside from James Gandolfini. He owns the role. He is the heart and soul of the show. And what I love about The Sopranos is that we're technically we're rooting for this monster, this kind of sociopath, but a sociopath who, you know has these good moments, you know, and that's what was so great about it. And it's sad that nowadays no one ever talks about The Sopranos. It's like, it's always glossed over. I know Game of Thrones is a great show and all, but come on, The Sopranos is better. And plus, it, it ended on a better note than Game of Thrones did. I know that 
um, the Sopranos ending, it's a very divisive ending, but I remembered watching that ending when I first saw the ending, I was like, wait, what happened? And then I had to rewind. I was like, okay, it's blacked out. Don't, don't, don't pull a trick over me, David Chase. And then it cuts to the credits. There's no sound. And then the last thing you hear in that episode technically is the HBO. Oh, but yeah, um, I know lots of people have tried to figure out what happens, but apparently David Chase had set it up earlier. They'd set it up the ending earlier. The thing is about the ending is I think it's a good ending. It ends where it should definitely end. Um, I like that it ends on an ambiguous note. We don't know what happens after that. You know, all we know is that, you know, Tony is going to the diner. Spoilers again. He's just going to go meet his fam. He just wants to have a, a, a decent night with his family. And, you know, while Meadow is parking her car, we focus in on Tony one last time and it cuts to black. I don't want to know what happens. I feel like I am fine not knowing what happens. You know, I remember David Chase um got criticized for that. And he's like, I would never do that to the end. He has a perfect defense, but I'm glad the show ended on the way it ended. Uh, one say, but it is one of the best series finales in my opinion. I love that it ends on an ambiguous note that we don't know what happens. And I, I, I could not ask for a better, you know, finale, you know, now that I'm more older, but I only saw it recently, but that's at least one good thing to come out of the pandemic is that I finally got to see this amazing series. I wish more people could talk about The Sopranos, though, because, you know, whenever people talk about the greatest TV shows, Sopranos is never brought up. It should be brought up. And hopefully with these videos, they can be brought up again. So, and I do know that The Many Saints of Newark, uh, the prequel movie is coming out later this year. I'm so excited for it, especially because, you know, David Chase, I think he's having some creative control on it. Like he's written the screenplay, but... I hope it's good enough. Uh, but yeah, this is WatchMojo.com, WatchMojo's top 10 best Sopranos episodes. It's hard to pick the be my favorite episode. I like all of them for, for entirely different reasons. But if I really had to pick my favorite, I would say my favorite one is the Pine Barrens episode. It's the one where I think Chrissy and Polly, they're going after this Russian guy. And they lose this guy. They try to take him. They're going to try and whack him in the woods. But then the Russian guy runs away. And now they're lost. And they have to be. They have to stay inside of a truck. And they're nearly freezing to death. And it was very funny. That's another thing about The Sopranos. Is that even though it's a very serious show. It still hasn't. It does right enough. You know. It still knows how to inject small moments of humor. And that's what I loved about Sopranos. Was the small moments. The the little things and like the tiny moment of humor it knew how to let the audience breathe a little you know it's like yeah let's throw in a joke over there but in a way that doesn't insult what's going on in the episode and that was the episode i think that was directed by Bashemi, and it had a very coen brothers aesthetic that episode anyway yeah let me check how long i've been in this video oh my god i oh god i've been in there here for like nearly nine minutes so let's just press play let's see what watch moto says and if anyone knows how I, where do i rank the finale i rank it at number two it's like my second favorite episode because i love that it ends on an ambiguous note let's just start the video i gotta drink some water This show gave us an inside look at the life of a fictional mafia boss as he struggles to balance his crime family with his real family. Yeah. So what, no f***ing ZD now? Hey. hey! Welcome to Watch Mojo. Also, AJ was a, a bit of an asshole, I'm not gonna lie. .com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top ten episodes Woke of The Sopranos. Morning. Things are good. Especially with Carmel. Hold on, uh, I'm... Uh, someone just came by. I'm going to go see who it is. All right. Well, I'm switching to the headphones, so I don't give... My mom just came back. So, yeah. Um. But then she starts ragging on me about the future. How she's worried. 
And what's going to happen to them if I'm dead? For this list, we're looking at the best moments from, from what many people consider to be one of the greatest television series of all time. Many of these episodes mm. contain major events, so a spoiler alert is most yeah. definitely uh, in effect. Also, uh, you're a waste man in this that. business. Everybody immediately assumes you're mobbed up. It's a stereotype, and it's offensive. Number 10, for all debts, public and private. Hey, throw it all away now. Waste it all. John D. Rockefeller, waste it all. The premiere episode of season four sees the show take a dark oh. turn that would mark its last seasons. My uncle, the boss of his family, is on trial for his life. And what you people are kicking up to him is a f***ing disgrace. With the recession affecting everyone differently, Tony comes to a harsh realization that the only way out of his criminal life is through death or jail. It's too ending yeah. for a guy like me. <coughs> High profile guy. Dead, Dead or in a can. He believes, however, that he may be able to escape either outcome by distancing himself from the everyday family operations to avoid potential prosecution. Not many men could survive without the love and support of their wife and children. No, 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 I'm talking about business. You trust only blood. Tony chooses Christopher to act as his buffer and cements this promotion by giving him the location of the man who allegedly killed his father. I didn't kill your oh, father, yeah. but you could... You don't want a cop kill on your head! Many consider season four to be the best season of The Sopranos, and this episode is where it all begins, as Christopher Moltisanti changes forever. <laughs> I'd say season three was the best one. That's just me, though. Number nine, the blue comet. What's with the tone? You sound like you're glad I'm taking it on the chin. What was the name of the episode? You sound like you're... The blue comet. What's with the tone? Oh. You sound like you're glad I'm taking it on the chin. Maybe you're projecting hostile feelings. The penultimate episode of The Sopranos truly was the beginning of the end. Listen to me, oh, I yes. don't have the any time where, to go into uh, a debate about any of this. This okay? is the episode where um, it's Bobby, that we all leave um, for a little while. Until Bobby gets uh, whacked. Out. To start, Bobby it marked the last appearance of Dr. Melfi, who finally concludes her sessions with Tony after realizing he's nothing but a sociopath. Since you are in crisis, I don't want to waste your time. You know, I'm going to be f***ing honest. As a doctor, I think what you're doing is immoral. The war between New Jersey and New York is on, and Tony attempts to end it quickly by having New York boss Phil Leotardo whacked. Who knows what the f*** he's got planned exactly. You get yeah. word to everybody. Your eyes in the back of your head. Break routines, collections, all that shit. A case of mistaken identity prevents mm. this from occurring, however, and New York strikes first, murdering Bobby and putting Silvio into a coma. Yeah. I got pissed off from me, but Silvio in the coma. Still in the coma. With two of his top guys out of the picture, Tony's forced into hiding, where he reflects on a prophetic statement Bobby once made to him about one's own murder. You probably don't even hear it when it happens. Number eight. That's the thing right there. Made to him about one's own murder. This is probably what they're foreshadowing. They foreshadowed this twice. I do know in one of the sessions Tony had with Dr. Melfi, and this quote from Bobby here. You probably don't even hear it when it happens. Which they foreshadow the ending, which I'm not going to get into, but... Hey. Number eight, Soprano Home Movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta admit it. Every time, once you're up here, pretty great. What is it about Monopoly that sends people into fits of rage? Under the... Just about everything. Monopoly is not a good game to play with your friends or family. It's kind of like, you know, Game of Life. Monopoly is like oh, the friendship ruiner. It, like, ruins friendships overall. Monopoly, the board game that teaches you how to become Donald Trump. Born one, witty schlong and change my house. Oh, God, Bobby! Throw two Sopranos into the mix and you have a recipe for disaster. But the story helped nab the show the Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series. What the f*** are you doing? You beat me fair and square. Tony and Carmela visit Bobby and Janice at their summer home, resulting in a drunken brawl between Tony and Bobby that's about way more than just a board game. 
after Bobby wins. We're left wondering whether the lovable Bobby Bacala's days are numbered, as Tony has killed yeah. over way less. He is head of the family. Do you think he's just gonna wake up tomorrow and forget about this? Instead, Tony has him commit his first murderous punishment, putting an end to Bobby's good guy image and setting the tone for a dark end to the final season. Yeah. Number seven, Kennedy, Kennedy and, and Heidi. Kennedy and Heidi. Uh, every time I look at the episode my kid, where uh, Chris uh, gets killed off. That uh, shit with Junior? Please. Prone to violent outbursts and suffering from on-again, off-again drug addiction, the question wasn't if Christopher was gonna die, it was when. But his death yeah. actually came when we least expected it. Even still, I say let him have it. Life's too short. I was kind of wondering that too. When would Chris Moltisanti get axed off? But, you know, I think they've been kind of setting it up. <laughs> Especially because, you know, if you look at how it started, you know, with, you know, probably with, well, you know, with Tony and Chris, it looks a lot like, you know, they were setting up that, you know, thing. Um, it was in season five, I think, that they I started, yeah, he's definitely going to die. It was the episode where, um, you know... Tony and Chris's then fiance Adriana Adriana get into a car accident, and lots of people assumed that Tony was sleeping with Adriana behind Chris's back. Chrissy's back, and um, yeah, and it all was like um, you know, then Chris shows up drunken, and you know, then Tony sees what's going on. Him and the whole gang grab Chrissy. They got it in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, it's like Chris is, Chrissy is drunk, and it's like, yeah. Sure. In this Emmy-winning episode, Chris and Tony have finally reconciled their differences and are driving home when Christopher rolls his SUV. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second, let me just pause. And we're back. And are driving home when Christopher rolls his SUV. Yeah. Tony, who has only cuts and bruises, is about to call 911 until Christopher admits he's fallen off the wagon again and pleads with Tony to take the blame for the accident. Never pass a drug test. Instead, seeing the destroyed car seat in the back, Tony realizes that Christopher is a danger to more than just himself and kills him with his bare hands. I think that's the thing, too, is, like, Tony will literally... He's literally just fending off for himself at that at this point. And that was kind of vi great visual uh, exposition there of seeing that, you know, if, this ha if Chris did this again, he would potentially endanger the life of his now born his now newborn daughter and you know i think it's that combination of tony real you know trying to you know every man for himself essentially and then seeing the car seat and deciding just to put uh, chris out of his misery is like very powerful scene <laughs> The rest of the show sees Tony handling Christopher's death with anger, avoidance, and eventually acceptance. He's dead. What? So, three out of the... The rest of the show sees Tony handling Christopher's death with anger, avoidance, and eventually acceptance. He's dead. Sort of... Yeah. I was about to look up the five stages of grief, but... No, it's just anger and acceptance. What? Uh, what? Tony is high there. <laughs> and he quaaludes. Number six, whoever did this. Oh, yes. This is the, the episode where Tony finally kills up Ralph Sofferetto. I was so happy when that happened because I, I, I freaking hated Ralph. Ralph was like, you know, especially that episode in which he kills the hooker you know, with his then unborn child. And there's like double meaning in this scene. What's funny about God and fate and shit like that? 
the horse gets better and we take out 200 grand in insurance on a race coming up, suddenly there's a fire. Just like Christopher, we all knew that Ralph Cifaretto was not going to survive the show. After Tony and Ralph's... That is the general rule of the Sopranos. It's kind of like Game of Thrones or anything. It's like... I always keep thinking of the, the meme from Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. One does not simply survive a season of an HBO show. Uh, I remember season uh, season two, it was Richie April, who was only in for one season. And um, yeah, and then it was Tony's cousin, Tony B, played by Steve Buscemi. You know, one season and eventually axed off. But yeah, no one's ever gone so far as The Sopranos. Yeah, so if you ever get cast in an HBO show, just remember, you may or may not get axed off. Co-owned racehorse Pi Oh My dies in a suspicious fire. Tony yeah. visits Ralph to Pi -oh question him about it. Don't give me that look. It was a f***ing horse. Tony has she turned a, a sweet... blind eye. Ralph, she was a sweet. I know it has double meaning. That horse was a sweet, beautiful, innocent creature, Ralph. ...to a lot of Ralph's horrible deeds in the past. But when Ralph hints that he started the fire to collect the insurance money, Tony kills him on the spot. That has double meaning, really, uh, is what I'm trying to say. It was, uh... I remembered uh, hearing about during Joe Pantoliano's time, side note, on the show, was that he had to kind of avoid the public for a while. So he had to wear a prosthetic hairpiece that he used in Memento to walk around so no one would notice him. But yeah, uh, that has double meaning. You know, I was always wanting Ralph Ferretto to die anyway, so it's satisfying. One of the most satisfying deaths on The Sopranos. For me, it's Ralph Ferretto and Phil Leotardo. Spoilers. Tony's brutal nature is on full display in this episode, which also marks the beginning of Junior's battle with Alzheimer's disease, something that would become a major storyline of the series. Can I have some ice cream? What? Uh, well... The degree in mental health of Junior. Right there. <laughs> Number five, long-term parking. You were looking down the barrel at 25 years. But I didn't do nothing. Take your head out of your ass, Adriana. You knew exactly what you were doing. Yeah, and uh, the episode the where Adriana is axed off. It's the things do not end well for rats. Why are you crying? Yeah. Gonna be Pussy Bop and Sarah. Why? The pressure of being an FBI informant begins to weigh too heavily on Adriana in this episode, and she reveals to Christopher that she has been helping the feds. They wanted me to wear a wire, but I wouldn't do it. But, 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 and, uh, but now there, there was a murder, Christopher, and, and they know about it. We've seen for ourselves that Adriana is just trying to protect Christopher from both prosecution and Tony. And she attempts to convince Chris to run away with her. Remember that, that time, Lake George? How you loved it? We could live someplace like that, maybe. You could start writing again. I could do my memoirs, finally. Chris wavers, but eventually chooses Tony and the family. And Adriana is killed by Silvio in what is the most heart-wrenching and difficult to watch death of the series. Yeah. Even though it occurs off screen. I think I, it's better that they showed it off screen rather than on screen, because I think when you see, when it's shown off screen, it evokes more than seeing it on screen. It's kind of like you know what's happening, so you don't need to see it. This was a brutal, unfortunate end to a relatively innocent character. I can't stand yeah. the pain. I love the dog. <laughs> Number four, college. Dad, yeah. being honest with me, right? Pretty soon here, you're gonna start hurting my feelings. The Sopranos was at its best when Tony was attempting to balance his family with the family. And yeah. no episode did it better than this and, one. Yeah. Are you in the Mafia? Am I in the what? Whatever you want to call it. Organized crime. That's total crap. Who told you that? While on a college tour with Meadow, 
Tony happens to notice a rat who disappeared into witness protection some time earlier. Eventually, Tony tracks the informant down and kills him. The first murder committed by Tony in the series. Jimmy says hello from hell, you f We clearly see both sides of this character. Caring father and a and brutal murderer. And yeah, an iconic anti-hero is born. How come your parents were anti-education? They weren't anti. Can't lay it all off on them. I got into a little trouble when I was a kid. The side plot is fantastic as well, as Tony's wife Carmela is shown to be aware of some of Tony's activities and nearly cheats on her husband with a priest, helping to earn Edie Falco her first Emmy Award. Oh uh, yeah, the, the weird ass priest. Oh my God, my car's been out there all night in plain sight. If we didn't do anything wrong, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Is there a commandment against eating ziti? Number three, uh, Fun just, House. What myself. the worst part of this is? This is one of those situations where I know I'm dreaming. If you thought Tony would spare Big Pussy Bump and Sarah because... No, I was having a feeling that Pussy was going to die. I remember this. This is the episode where Tony ends up uh, getting food poisoning because of Pussy Bump and... This is where Tony gets food, po food poisoning. And, you know, essentially he's hallucinating. Because of their long history, think again. Like I'll push you on the brain. Spare Big Pussy Bump and Sarah because of their long history? Think again. Yeah. Like I'll push you on the brain. I always do. Pussy was a troubled character throughout season two, struggling under the pressures of being an FBI informant against one of his best friends. A year and a half, no. Less. A year and a f***ing half you've been running your own f***ing gossip column? In this Emmy-nominated episode, it takes multiple food poisoning-induced fever dreams for Tony to realize that Pussy is a rat. And together with Silvio and Polly, they all take one last boat ride together. On the face, okay? Give me that. They briefly reminisce and share a final drink before the trio fills Pussy's body with bullets and dumps it into the sea to sleep with the fishes. The only sad part is eventually, maybe two years later, I think, a few years later, Pussy would be reincarnated as an octopus in a horrible movie called Shark Tale. Yeah, it was the octopus. Yeah. Another interesting thing about Shark Tale, uh, Michael Imperioli was Frankie. Things that during that time were, it was like, if you were in The Sopranos, you could be in anything. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, switch here and pause video again. We're back. And the video is lagging. This is arguably the toughest murder for Tony in the series, but one he has to commit to protect himself. Yeah. Number two, white caps. And I felt probably like someone who was terminally ill and somehow. Oh, this is the episode where Carmela decides to separate from Tony. Well, they yeah. managed to forget it for a minute. And then it all comes back. The season four finale contains the most brutal argument between Tony and Carmela in the entire series, but balances it with a funny, much less intense side story. Gang gangster asshole. <laughs> Both James Gandolfini and Edie Falco won Emmys for their performances in this episode, as Carmela finally draws the line on Tony's infidelity after one of Tony's mistresses calls the house. You know what I don't understand, Tony? <laughs> what does she have that I don't have? This marital dispute was four seasons in the making, as Tony and Carmela let it all out at once. You have made a fool of me for years with these whores. Now it's coming to our home? During this whole disaster, Tony is also trying to get his deposit back on a summer home and uses some non-physical musical means of intimidation. <laughs> Call the police. I Just turn it down Vegas again when the police boat comes. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You got work to do. The debut do pilot. It. Everything's gonna be all right from here on in. Come on. But you are not going to hell. Uh, this is the episode, one of the f episodes in season six where he was in a coma. You're coming back here. Ask yourself a question. 
I dream of Jeannie Kusumano. Am I that stupid? Huh? Am I that fucking stupid? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to break the social compact. Play of the month. Uh, this was a hard episode to watch as well. Where uh, Dr. Melfi was attacked. But that's not saying. There's not a certain satisfaction in knowing that I could have that asshole squashed like a bug if I wanted. Number one. Pine, Pine Barrens. Barrens. Yes. The best episode, in my opinion. Aaron's. Jesus Christ, look at you. All night in this f***ing hellhole. Who would have thought a show about the Mafia could be so funny? Yeah. That was an interior decorator. This house looked like shit. This episode is pure <laughs> comedic gold, as we see Tony attempt to balance several elements in his life, including his affair with Gloria Trillo, which begins to spiral out of control. You know what? I don't got time for this shit. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life piece of shit. You know what? Here, take your fucking dinner. An interesting thing about the steak is, uh, shit. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life piece of shit. You know what? Here. I think here is where G Gloria, the actress who plays Gloria, uh, Trillo here, throws it. But take your this is actually Steve Buscemi who directed this episode before he was ever on the show as in a role. And they actually threw this at James Gandolfini. But perhaps more important is the storyline reminiscent of a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. As Christopher and Polly like get it. lost in the Pine Barrens <laughs> yeah. after a routine collection goes terribly wrong. How far is it to Atlantic City? Ah! 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 Directed by future cast member and frequent Coen Brothers collaborator Steve Buscemi, it's your classic fish out of water storyline with plenty of dark humor and banter between the odd couple. Do yourself a favor, Chrissy, and go back to f***ing sleep. Why? So you could choke me? What? <laughs> Think I'm stupid. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite episode of The Sopranos? What do you care what people th I'm think? I'm You know the truth. I gotta live in the world. And now I look like Joe Jerkoff. For more great top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Don't stop. Yeah. We had to end it at that. <laughs> Arguably the most controversial ending of the series, but a welcome one. I like that, the way it ends, that we don't know what happens. And it leaves for wild mass guessing. It's like, what's in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Did the, stop, did the top stop spinning in Inception? Did the totem stop spinning? <laughs> This guy was an interior decorator. His ass looked like shit. <laughs> yeah. So many good memories. Some good memories of The Sopranos. And, um, yeah. I'm relatively going to um, end the video here. So, this was WatchMoto.com's top, top 10 best Sopranos episodes. And uh, I'll leave a link to the original video down below, as well as a link to WatchMojo.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'm just going to wish you all Godspeed, all right? Take care, everybody.